LOP in the building. My life been a movie, I should've filmed it. Nicely with the pin game. Pops taught me to spit game. Get your cameras ready, we heavy catch when I'm in frame. Product, opinionated when I'm coming through smooth with it. I be kicking back, you could Google it. When I'm black to the boot, he the truth, just another lane lock. I'm a Crown Heights legend, still repping the same block. You are now listening to the Life of Product Podcast. Yeah, what up, man? It's your boy Product. You are now locked into the Life of Product Podcast, episode 1010 is a special number. We in double digits now. Let's get it. And you know what? That's not even on me. That's on y'all. I really want to thank y'all. You guys have really shown a lot of support. You guys have been hitting my DMs, uh, the email, uh, giving suggestions on the show, giving feedback on the show. And every amount of feedback that you guys hit me with, I really fucking appreciate it. Um, before I start today's show, I, I have to uh, say a, a big rest in peace, man. A, a friend of mine, really good friend of mine, one of my man's current bed, rest in peace, brother. Uh, his life was taken from us. Um, born April 15th, 1983. Uh, lost his life uh, December 12th, 2020, man. God rest his soul. Uh, God bless him, his children, and his family. Crown Heights baby, 712. I. Let's get into it. Today's show is about wins and losses, right? Before we touch the win side of things, I want to touch losses. You know, we got to kind of get the bad shit <laughs> out the way first. It's 2020 has been fucking bad. Uh, very bad. Uh, you know what? We're in the final stretch of 2020. Thank God we are in the final stretch of 2020. 2020 is almost done. Let's approach 2021 with a positive attitude. I know that's a lot easier said than done especially with this uh, so-called second string coming over here, whatever. But we took a lot of losses in 2020. Shouts out to everybody that's still alive. Shouts out to everybody that's well. And shouts out to everybody that is still pushing. Pushing through to 2021 might be the hardest thing that you've ever done in your life. It might be mentally hard. And we have to see some type of end goal to all of this. But um, the key part is uh, we have, you have to be bigger than your situation. You have to look at your life and say, it's here now, but I know for a fact things are going to be bigger. And that's easier said than done, especially when our home lives play a part in our mental stability. Listen, your home life, depending, when, when you get off work and you go home, everything you deal with after work is going to pretty much define you, whether it's you dealing with your children, you dealing with your spouse, uh, you dealing with the bills holding over your head, you checking the mail, damn, I'm late on this, date on that, I'm late on that. Your mental stability is a key part. I actually believe I read somewhere that there was a rise in domestic violence this year during quarantine. When quarantine first hit, I was reading, I believe, it rose up. And even, even violence against children in the home, that shit rose up too. Imagine you're a woman and the only escape that you have is the eight hours a day you're at work. Imagine being a woman the only escape that you have is the eight hours a day when your spouse is at work. Now, your job furloughed you. His job furloughed him. You guys are home. He's mad. He's being abusive. 2020, the loss factor has went too fucking far. It's went too far in, in 2020. And I need you guys to listen to me, try to find some type of end goal and stay strong to push through this shit. Imagine being a kid and... Your home life is not the greatest. Your parents, your mother, your father, your, or if your grandparents are raising you, their financial situation is not, not the greatest. And the only time you got to eat is while you were at school. So, you know, most cities and states, kids go to school, they'll eat breakfast, they'll eat lunch. They might be in the after school program where they're getting a snack. Now, imagine you're a kid. You're not getting that. You're at home now. And your parents don't have it like that. You're hungry. The shit is mentally fucking with you because ultimately our kids feel stressed too. And a lot of us neglect that. As Not to get off straight of topic, but a lot of us as parents, we tend to often neglect the or overlook or push to the side the stress that our kids are seeing and dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis because we're so fucking focused on ourselves. We're so focused on paying the bills. We're so focused on keeping the household in order. Our kids will be stressed right in our faces and we're neglecting it. And a lot, and a lot of y'all know your kids are stressed, but you just don't give a fuck because you're being selfish and you're putting yourself first. And uh, and but you know that <laughs> that's uh that's another story, that's another story. Um, losses, man. We're talking about losses first. A lot of these students, they took losses. It's oh man, these kids and talk a lot, a lot of losses. Um, 
these kids didn't get to do their graduation this year. And I've, I've actually heard adults say, oh, it's just a graduation. Nah, dog, it's it's more than that. It's more, that shit is a memory. I remember my graduation from the time I woke up to the time I, I got my diploma and walked across that stage. That's That's a special thing. A lot of kids bust their ass to get to that graduation and they were so short on that. They they lost out on that. That 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 memory to walk across that stage. You they were imagine how many kids earlier this year um were set to graduate and they were first time graduates in their family. They they mother got a GED or the mother didn't graduate, the father got a GED or the father didn't graduate. So they never experienced that. They got aunts and uncles that didn't graduate. You you'd be surprised how many people in their family when they graduate. They are a first time graduate. And I know this shit might sound crazy, but realistically speaking, because I because I've known people who were first time graduates in their families. And from seeing people at graduations, actually experiencing and seeing people at graduations where they were a first time graduate, you see the love, you see the happiness on their family lives. Or imagine if they wasn't a first time graduate and they struggled. To get where they're at, there are kids with ADHD. There are kids with with, with different um learning defects. Some of them might be dyslexic. There's all kind of shit that these kids deal with, and to get to that point, it's fucking difficult. But they got there. Now they're just gonna get a piece of paper. They're not gonna get the experience of it. To me, yeah, I got my high school diploma, but to me, the the experience was worth just as much as that piece of paper. My experience of walking across the stage when I graduated was worth just as much as my diploma because I'm going to keep it real with y'all. There was a certain point in my life I wanted to uh, drop out of high school. It wasn't because I couldn't do the work, but me, I was not a people person and I hated being around people for some reason. I just didn't like it. I felt uneasy. And me, my, my, my high school career started in Brooklyn, New York. Um, there were classes, um, I think the only class I have felt, <laughs> don't laugh at me, I felt gym <laughs> when I was in the ninth grade. Because the first semester, I didn't really do shit. I just came to school every fucking day. Second semester, um, I actually did participate and motherfuckers still felt me. Which is like, I bet this is what y'all doing. But I mean, that, that didn't affect nothing. I actually felt algebra was on, when I was in the ninth grade. Then boom, my parents split up. I moved, uh, my pops decided to relocate and go down south. I finished, I went with my pops and I finished high school down south and every class I aced except for fucking algebra. Algebra was hard for me. I act the funny thing about me, my grades were great. I actually almost didn't graduate because of my math grades the last semester of my senior year because but I was able to bring my math grade up to a C and I graduated. So, for me that experience of walking across the stage, I worked hard to get to that shit. Like I bust my ass. I was going to after school um at the school programs to learn how to, you know, really prepare for the final that I had to take and stuff like that. I was staying up late studying like a month before like school ended because I knew the final was coming up. So these kids really got, they got, they, they, they got gypped out of that shit, in, in my opinion. Um, also on the losses side, this shit is, it's, it's hurting their, so, their social skills. These kids, imagine being a kid, right? And you're used to having a system of learning. Now you have to pretty much do it yourself. This shit is like some real DIY shit. Now I know these kids are on the Zoom classes. They're on the Google classes and shit like that, right? But it's not the same as actually going to class and you're feeling that energy. When you go to class and you're feeling that energy, it's not going to be the same thing. And um, <laughs> it's kind of it's funny because um, my kids was complaining. Oh, I hate online school and. This, I, I'm pretty sure other parents are going to listen to this. And he said the same thing I said. I was like, damn, I wish I was able to wake up in my boxes and go to class on my computer when I was your age. You know what I'm saying? That's the, you you know you getting old when you say something like that to your kids. When you say something like that to your kids, you know, I, the youth is, the, the last stretch of youth juice is there. You know what I'm saying? Old age started kicking. <laughs> but, um. It's hurting their social skills, man. Um, these kids have friends. They missed out on proms. They missed out on graduation. They missed out on sports. They missed out on the social factor of everything. These kids, a lot of kids are sleeping late, missing online classes because technically they you clicking a button and being marked as present as far as as opposed to getting up, getting dressed, going to school and walking through that door on time is two totally different things. 
even though it's the same thing, but it's two totally different things. On, on the, as far as the the mental factor, one holds more weight than the other because the kid walking to school and being marked late, physically late, or getting a late card to them is gonna play more of a toll on them mentally than just waking up and not clicking that button and shit. Like I me, mean, look at look at the kids who was playing sports. My oldest son was a um he was a wrestler. He was on a wrestling team. Can't do that shit now. You know what I'm saying? I really don't know when this pandemic is going to be over, but honestly, I don't think this shit is safe. And he doesn't think it's safe either. You can't come to us a year from now and say, all right, all these kids got COVID tests, put them on the map, but these kids roll with their parents in a car to a, a wrestling match, and or they roll on a school bus with 20 other kids and staff members, five staff members, and somebody on there got it. Now the kid they're going to wrestle got it. You got to grab the kid, slam them. Y'all sweating on each other. You're on a sweaty fucking map. So it's, it's really... um. These kids really, really didn't get their just due um, due to COVID-19, coronavirus, the Rona, whatever you fucking want to call it. But that's the the, uh, the loss factor <laughs> of it. Let's, let's talk about wins real quick. Um, when it comes to wins, yeah, a lot of companies did lose. Companies furloughed. They shut down. They filed bankruptcy. On the flip side of that, a lot of these companies, you have the quote unquote essential companies that went from million dollar companies to billion dollar companies to fucking trillion dollar companies. They, these so if if a XYZ lives in such and such city and the Walmart might have shut down or the such and such shut down, this store shut down, they don't have that many chain stores. What are they gonna do? They're gonna go on Amazon, they're gonna go on Walmart.com, they're gonna go on Target. A lot of these companies, FedEx made bank during this, Amazon made bank during this pandemic. And these essentials that these people needed, it wasn't, you know, a lot of people, they wanted to shop. They wanted X, Y, Z. They couldn't go for that. But, you know, when a lot of us, like I've had conversations with people and a lot of people, when they say, oh, all these people just ordering random shit. No, it's not everybody. Just, yeah, I, I've ordered random shit. But on the flip side of it, everybody's not just ordering random shit. A lot of people have ordered their medicine. A lot of people have ordered medical equipment. My pops orders his medical equipment. It's sent to him. And they deliver it. People like that. You have a lot of old people. What about what about the people that are diabetic that can't go buy their medical equipment or they can't go get their insulin from wherever they was getting it from? Now it has to be shipped and delivered to them. What about those people? What about the people with cancer and the things that they need to get and their medicine is coming in? What about all of these people? So these essential companies, thank God these companies are still open. Thank God that these companies have adjusted because we need it. Now, I've heard people complain, oh, these companies made money. Yeah, they made ma money, but guess what? Go start your own fucking company. You could, you could go make a million dollars right now. You could make a trillion dollars right now. Go start your own essential company and be essential and stop fucking complaining because at the end of the day, we have to adjust. People have a problem, and, and I'm speaking from on the outside from what I've seen. A lot of people seem to have a problem watching other people win during this pandemic because they are taking loss after loss after loss. And that is understandable. I don't agree with it because I'm not a hater, but I understand it. I see the pain in a lot of people. I got a lot of friends, a lot of family that have went through it, that are going through it. And the shit that's hitting them daily back to back hurts. It hurts me hearing them talk about it. You can, you can hear the pain in their voices. So to watch people lose their jobs, to watch people get eviction notices, be late on rent, have less food in their fridge, get a get a bum ass six hundred dollar stimulus check or a six hundred dollar stimulus offer to to feel that or be in those shoes and to watch other people, you know, making bank, making bank, making bank, that's gotta hurt them. Now, you are you, I am me, they are M. They are them. <laughs> I said M, they are them. Um I have a different uh approach towards things, my mentality and the way I look at things is different because I look at life like if they can do it, I could do it. Fuck it. I might do it better. So I don't I try not to compare myself to other people, especially right now, because I don't know what your home life is like. I don't know what your goals is like. I don't know what your certifications is like. I don't know what your background is like. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Shouts out to you because I'm not a hater. I I genuinely wish people uh, uh, well in their situations, but there are people right now, and I get it, man, there's people right now looking at other people's situations and, and, and they're hurt. And I was, I was in the airline industry and, you know, there was so many talks of furlough, so many talks of shutting down. Certain, certain stations actually got shut down. Airlines got shut down. I have friends from other airlines who were home. 
because of the pandemic. And I was at work every day. And and even though at a certain point I was had got cut, then he picked back up. I was looking like, damn, I'm I'm very blessed. The company I was working for didn't go that route. Me and my coworkers, I got a lot of friends at right, real friends that worked for the same company. And we all had these talks about how thankful we were. So there are not just companies that got wins during everything in 2020. There are individuals who got wins in 2022. And shouts out to y'all. I mean, I'm gonna tell you something. This is some real ass shit. So wake up in the middle of 2020, knowing people that died, knowing people that got sick, and to still get the fuck up, deal with your home life, go to work with your head high, wear a mask all day, go to work, get it popping, and go home. That takes a special set of uh, of strength within you as an individual. It, ta- it you have to be a special person. You you gotta be big. I'm not saying physically big, but you have to be big. Your whole aura and your sense of self has to be big because not a lot of people will will do that. A lot of people was happy when shit shut down and they stay home like, all right, I'm going to get this unemployment. I'm going to get this stimulus check. I'm going to get this $600 a week. They were happy for that. And, and I get that. But some of us, our lives were set up different and some of us needed more than that. You know what I'm saying? And some of us wasn't fortunate enough <laughs> for our jobs to fully shut down. I'm not saying I wanted my job to fully shut down, but it's like, yo, I ain't bad though. Cause some listen, I, I knew people who job shut down, they was getting unemployment plus the six hundred and they was on vacation. And I'm I am not a hater. I hope you have fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope they I hope they were safe. But I know people, dog, and I was I personally know people and I would go on a gram like, damn, he on the beach again. That's what's up. I'm not a hater though. Listen. That's how you living, rock out, brother. But um, 2020 was full of wins and losses, and um, I want to leave y'all with a little bit of inspiration before I sign off for the show. Right, look at everything, look at how your life was set up before 2020. Look at your life pre 2020. Prior to 2020, your life was set up one day, one way. 2020 hits, your life is now set up this way. You're most likely looking at your life like many other people. As far as 2021 and beyond, you're afraid, you are nervous, um, you are up in the wind, you don't know where everything is going to go, right? You have to, I don't know what your spiritual spirituality is like. I prefer to leave things in God's hands, right? I'm gonna say this. If you to the pe- there are people that don't think like that. There are people that try to be proactive and do everything your way, but I, I'm gonna tell you like this, right? Poke your chest out and let your fucking nuts hang. That's what I I, I was. Taught by a lot of OGs, sometimes you got to poke your chest out and let your fucking nuts hang. And I'm going to tell you why. Because when 2021 hits, and by the grace of God, you wake up and you open your eyes, that means you was put in 2021 for a fucking reason. You was put in 2021 for a reason to progress, to build, to be thankful and be humble and to keep on pushing. And you, if you have children or if you have siblings or whatever, you have people close to you, say if those people close to you are younger than you or they don't have that same attitude it is up to you. You have to do your due diligence and instill that into them. Because if you don't instill that into them, they're going to be out here scared. They're not going to swim. They're going to fucking drown in 2021. 2021 is going to be an ocean of opportunity for all of us. Not even just financially. It's an opportunity for life. If 2021 comes and you are still here, I urge a lot of y'all to be proactive Call the person that you that you don't talk to no more. Call that family member that you don't talk to no more. Step up to the dude that you had beef with and let him know, you know what, brother? This shit is over. Let's not do this shit. Because a lot of people lost their lives in 2020. I just started the show and a really good friend of mine lost his life. He was stabbed, which made no fucking sense. No fucking sense. And and I don't want to see none, none of y'all go through that. I don't want to hear about none of y'all going through that. I don't want to go through that myself. Because at the end of the day, we are human and no human being should have that type of power to dictate whether you wake up tomorrow or not. Yeah, it's the boy Product. You are now locking with the Life of Product podcast episode 10, baby. I'm signing off. Get at me.